I want to want to welcome brother and dear uh, colleague Dr. Bayo Akomolafe um, to this conversation. Um, he uh, represents for me uh, the the confluence and converges of so many forces and, and lineages, not just psychology, not just Yoruba, um, cosmology, new materialism, post uh, all kinds of post post activism, post modernism, uh, compost activism, which we can probably get into a little later, uh, but just wanted to welcome uh, Brother Bio into this conversation around healing-centered education. Brother Bio, good to be here with you. Thank you, my dear brother. So yeah. glad to be here. Yes, yes. So we are, um, we're in the process of curating an experience, uh, the Healing-Centered Education Summit, uh, the first of its kind. And uh, the theme of it is uh, pedagogies for collective recovery. Um, and I'll just say a few things around why, why the term healing centered and why some of us, uh, at least in the United States in particular, um, are, are claiming that there has been a turn. Um, so over, very brief, over the last hundred years or so, there appears to be some evidence that at least in the US in terms of pedagogical approaches, there's been a more restorative turn in the sense that you have the rise of restorative justice as an attempt to question the carceral state, the over punitive policies within prisons, but also schools um, and how in large part in bodies of color and people of color are the ones that are subject to those yeah. uh, policies. So restorative justice as a way to restore, bring some kind of restoration to the justice system. And there you may have some sister movements, uh, healing justice, sister apprentice, sister apprentice as Princess Hemphill is part of that tradition, uh, Adrian Marie Brown as well, transformational justice. But then you also uh, see this uh, uh, this rise in mindfulness, uh, you know, the secularization of mindfulness in the '90s, and, yeah. and the integrating mindfulness in public schools as a way to support students' social emotional development. So there's mindfulness, there's restorative justice, then there's social emotional learning mm -hmm. and teaching kids to regulate their emotions. A lot of that coming out of Harvard and emotional intelligence, Daniel Goleman's work. And then lastly, um, trauma-informed pedagogy or trauma-informed or trauma-sensitive teaching. So a few of us are kind of pulling back and saying, mm, that's interesting that there are these pedagogical projects uh, mm -hmm. initiatives that are trying to restore something, restore, <laughs> something. Whether, whether it's the curriculum itself in terms of creating a mo more humane experience for students to be able to articulate their emotions yeah. or a curriculum that's infused with social justice pedagogy to help students navigate understanding the systems that may be causing the trauma in the uh -huh. first place. Um, lastly, that there may be, uh, there, there are many other dimensions that we can get into. I just wanted to really ground for you why this notion of healing centered is, is even yeah. comes to fruition. And then yeah. lastly, uh, restoring a sense of uh, harmony or at least some balance with Mother Earth <laughs> in light of where we are. So, but but I, I, I wanted to invite you into the conversation because you have a particular interesting perspective around what healing means and um, and just we're just excited to talk to you about this work and what does it mean to be healing center. Mm, mm. <clears throat> Thank you, brother. I was going to add to that beautiful uh, lineage of approaches um, a certain well, it's not in the justice oriented paradigms, but the the. the what has been noted in the literature as a neuroreductionism, mm -hmm. that is a, ret a return to the body. Mm -hmm. right? so, you know, so, so going back to the body again, the body matters, you see. And so there is this, um, and this is not just Antonio Damasio, before Antonio Damasio and his um, somatic marker theory, there, there has been this quest to to re-somatize our conversations. And so yeah. that also is spilling into the into popular culture as you know, newfound interests 
in what the body is doing in the vagus nerve in mm. in in the body and its multiplicities and its organs um my you know taking a strand from that my concern and i don't think it's unilaterally or exclusively mine my concern is especially with the body and it and as it pertains to healing is what discourses paradigms ideologies um uh, assumptions are at work mm -hmm. when we theorize the body mm -hmm. what body mm -hmm. right because the body is doesn't just appear uh you know unvarnished it, it doesn't it doesn't appear pure into space mm -hmm. uh, bodies aren't born bodies are made mm -hmm. right black bodies white bodies are not born they're made they're manufactured mm -hmm. the somatic is always inexorably irretrievably entangled with us with the semantic mm -hmm. right so what ideologies are at work when we define the body what risks are you know are there what is at stake mm -hmm. i feel that most of the time when we um when we speak about healing today and recovery we are conjuring the body of the capitalist state mm -hmm. of the nation state Mm. We're, we're conjuring the body of liberal humanism, mm. brutal humanism, the body that is conveniently located within the Euclidean space of techno-bureaucratic capitalism, late-stage capitalism. Mm. And I wonder if healing then or health isn't um, rooting yourself into this machine, mm -hmm. right? It, like, like what it means to be well then, is to be at peace with yourself, mm -hmm. is to have your body function in a way that you know, hospitals and doctors and all their practices can attest to as positive, mm -hmm. um, is to be able to go about your work, is to be productive. I wonder what that means, what healing, recovery, and health means in a time when everything seems to be breaking down. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be well on the Titanic? What does it mean to be healed or to recover when our bodies are now found to be um, concatenations of ecologies, mm. no longer isolated subjects within, you know, uh, a, a stable geometry? Yeah, yeah, no, the major, major point. And I uh, want to acknowledge you bringing in uh, the somatic uh, uh, influence in in the healing centered turn, you know the 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 whole influence of the the effect of turn in the academy with Deleuze and Guattari and many others, yes. um, all that kind of uh, has, has has kind of come to a, a point of spillage, I think. Um, and then yes. also just like more and more uh, people engaging in decolonial approaches to education and trying to move beyond mind body dualism and you know the whole the Carti Cartesian logic and the body being, you know, really, really central. Um, so yes, yes. And yeah, we can, you, you and I can nerd out on the many other possible lineages that uh, may be at play here. They may be, this, may, this one more just to acknowledge uh, is just that you, you see many people kind of touch on indigeneity or indigenous approaches or trying to return to older ways of yeah. knowing, that return to, or, or at least the desire of it is is somewhat of a an attempt to engage in a restorative turn um yes 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 mm. it, well it's it it just seems to me it, it it's it plays with what i was saying earlier that uh, i i'm very worried about return to originals yeah, yeah. what what's what's the name for that again uh i forget it starts with an r <laughs> mm. uh it's it, it's like uh yeah discussing it with another brother uh, a celtic nordic brother oh some time ago who is who does some work in nordic animism um it, it it's it's the i and i think that's a symptom of modern modern epistemologies yeah right now we find ourselves here this is a bad place let's go back mm. the, the 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 instigation the the possibility of imagining that worlds are stable that we can return to a stable past or revisit rituals or excavate them as if they were 
whole or already there, not relational, mm -hmm. is, uh, is modern imagination secreting and repopulating itself. Mm. Um, so, so, so I, I, I'm very wary about, very wary about attempts, like even repatriation, you mm. know, and well, let's go back to Africa. <laughs> uh, you, I don't know, I, I just lost myself here. Like there isn't an Africa to return to mm. in, in that sense. The, the Africa, your, your fathers and your mothers left behind is not the same mm. one you're returning to. There, there isn't something stable to return to. The world moves, as Chino Achebe would say, and we move along with it. No, yeah, and I, and I think that um, from some of the vantage points of some of the communities that, are, that I think are kind of coalescing around this, you know, healing-centered turn, there is a questioning of that, you know, what do we mean by, yeah. what do we mean by restoration? Um, so just for, just in, in light of like that strand of indigenous, you know, connect, reconnecting to indigenous knowledge, you know, there is just this, this attempt not to, to return, but to integrate, you know, to integrate, you know, some of the work of uh, Sister um, Robin Wall Kimmer with braiding sweetgrass, yeah. indigenous yeah. scientific. So just on many different fronts, on the, sci the scientific and research uh, space, you know, trying to find different ways to 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 explode traditional methodologies. I mean, post qualitative research being uh, part yeah. of that. Um, yeah. So. So yeah, let's 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 trouble let's let's continue to trouble it because I, I find there is some value in the healing centered turn, but that's that's why I'm uh -huh. intentionally because you would purposely kind of uh, trouble it. But this notion of trauma, um, obviously, yeah. you calling it out, you know, trauma within a specific universe and paradigm and world of and a political economy that works a certain way. But how do you how do you think through tra trauma? traumatic experiences and rebounding from trauma um, from, from your lens? And is that even a, pro, a, a preoccupation? Mm -hmm. Period, you know, it might not be. Mm. Mm. How do I think about trauma, recovering from trauma? Well, the trauma is, I forget the authors. I'm very bad with memory this time. I think I haven't had my fill of dosa. <laughs> um, but, but um, I, I can't recall the authors who said trauma is more or an ethical arrangement than mm. a clinical reality. Mm. Right, mm. right. I mean, I mean, the history of trauma is quite fascinating how it was once called railway spine, mm. right? Yeah. Um, and, and it came, the, the, the term over the course of um, some, you know, some years, uh, became, it was highly somatized, it was highly somaticized, um, emerging from the observations that people who were on, you know, on the tracks, on the train, and suffered accidents, were reporting with disturbances, mm. with pains, um, um, maybe a lack of coordination. And it to their man manner, there's something wrong, but physicians couldn't nail it. They couldn't put their finger on it. Mm -hmm. So, so it was named railway spine. But mm -hmm. you see, no one believes that crap. Mm -hmm. You know, there were the because those people who were affected by it started to stake their claims, at, you know, to the railway companies mm -hmm. who had now created this new technology that was faster than anything they had known before people were traveling faster but the accidents were becoming a new phenomenon mm -hmm. um, so people were like you have to pay me for this i'm feeling off i'm feeling and the companies would be like show us proof mm -hmm. where's the proof mm -hmm. um, and physicians couldn't help so increasingly this somatic reality uh, named the railway spine started to gain psychic characteristics mm -hmm. you know they started to shift the goal post a little bit so mm -hmm. trauma emerged, not, this is never to say that it's not real, real is yeah. contested, right? But that trauma emerged out of the, um, the vortex of economic, industrial, um, legalistic, juridical concerns. It, it, it's, it wasn't en entirely or purely 
some clinical thing that was just discovered. We should always be careful with the language of discovery. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just noticed. It mm -hmm. was created and manufactured in policies, in lengthy uh, treatises, in yeah. psychodynamic uh, contestations. Mm -hmm. it, it was, that's how it emerged. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually like to point that out, that it, it's not just there, you know, harm does not just come from without, you know, today it has, the language of trauma has become so popular. It's doing so much of work <laughs> that it's not, it's doing, it's doing no work at all. Everyone seems to be traumatized and triggered. Mm -hmm. The language that was, uh, you know, allocated for, for instance, for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, triggers and all of that now seem to be have seeped into popular culture. So everyone is triggered now. Yeah, yeah. Even the term trigger is triggering, right? Yeah, so it's just, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it seems it's doing so much of work that it's overdetermined, right? So ev everything now seems tra traumatic and we're now bristled bodies or what did Dave Chappelle call it? We're, we're now brittle bodies, mm -hmm. brittle bodies, easily broken. I can say more, but I think you want to you want to take it somewhere else. Oh, oh no, yeah, but I I just want to acknowledge the zeitgeist, right? There's a nerve. Yes. There. There's a nerve there that I think is provocative for us to kind of circulate around. Right. And even us, uh, you know, science and non duality. They uh, they had that uh, documentary with um, Gabor Monte. Gabor Monte, yes. Trauma. The wisdom, and, and, and you know, I was involved in some of the conversations around it, and it galvanized almost three million people to watch. The, yes. the incredible film. So there is this yeah. kind of deep hunger yes, for conversations around uh, trauma. And then also I think the pandemic as well for many has been uh, uh, traumatizing. Um, yes. But precisely, uh, I, I think there is space here to kind of trouble, yes. really trouble what we're, what we're discussing. Let me just kind of frame, because uh, so much of the, the healing centered approaches that uh well i would say from from my dissertation and research some of the first evidence of, of healing centered approaches and they date along they're, they're, they're dated in terms of history and you know human community being able to create conditions rituals and circles to just be able to be in harmony with nature but also deal with the uncertainty of life but mm -hmm. specifically in my in my in my work, I I, I identify healing centered pedagogies arising in response to colonial rule in yes. the indigenous community. So there the, you go. The, the 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 psychic preservation of one's own integrity in light of the assault, whether it be sent to boarding school or removed from land. I see the beginnings of a of restorative and healing center pedagogies there. Yes. And, and, and I think I think it's gotten a little bit more uh, complicated and rich. Um, yes. just, just to have you respond to this, that yes, uh, trauma is kind of uh, uh, ethical entanglements, um, but also the, there are some concrete historical realities that many communities are responding to that mm -hmm. require strategies, tactics, some of them fugitive, in order to respond to. Mm -hmm. Structural. I agree. I agree, brother. I agree totally. It's, um, you know, it's, it's the question this, of Baruch Spinoza. What can a body do, mm. right? That we don't know what bodies can do. You could stretch that out and say that bodies are strange things. Was it? Um, forget. Um, I think Horton Spiller speaks about the flesh, mm -hmm. the hieroglyphics of the flesh. Mm -hmm. The flesh is unwieldy, right? And I'm reading it differently here, paraphrasing Spiller's by noticing that the flesh is unwieldy. Definition comes with risks. Mm -hmm. um, colonization, colonization created the human body. Mm -hmm. It didn't discover it. It didn't contain it merely. It, it created the human, the human as a trope. Mm -hmm. And the bodies, we, we, we're not just anthropomorphic um, organisms um, uh, naturally, right? We, we, we appear and we are in this way and we function in this way processually with the world. We navigate the world in, in the ways that we do because of the ideologies, colonization, traumatic 
intergenerational spillages and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, um, I'm, my point is to notice, is to call into question the, um, the discourses, the stories that work when we frame healing in a particular way. Yeah. I like that you call them strategies, mm -hmm. right? Um, we need those strategies of healing. We need those strategies of, um, for instance, um, Rezma Manakem's somatic abolitionism. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just the exercise of breathing can be nurturing, can be healing, can help with recovery, mm -hmm. right? Even Kegel, Kegel pelvic exercises <laughs> are, 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 are healing in some way, mm -hmm. can help with bringing us home to yeah. ourselves, in the manners that we speak about those things, bringing yeah. us home, grounding us in the earth, all of that. But my question is always, what ideologies are playing out here? And what, what are the unseen, invisible costs of these strategies? Yeah. If these strategies help us resituate ourselves, and yeah. I think this is something that Rezma, um, uh, want, I wanted to have a conversation with him about. If health and healing grounds us into a capitalist arrangement mm. even further, if it entrenches us within a larger algorithm, because mm. trauma is a cybernetic pattern, right? Mm. When people speak about intergenerational, they like to think that trauma is this already made thing, like, an, like a molecule that yeah. jumps from human to human, passed from parent to children. Yeah. I don't think of it that way because bodies are much more volatile than we think they are, right? So it's not just an easy uh, unilinearity. It, it's, it, it's, it's a cybernetic pattern that becomes resilient. Mm -hmm. patterns in ecology, patterns in how we speak, patterns in how we eat and smell and do things. So it's a vast um, algorithm that continually reshapes and reshapes itself, our bodies along with it. My question is always uh, to notice that if the soma is the point, where is the pencil or where is the, 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 the pen that is making this point? Where is the, what is the font that is making this sentence that is our bodies or that is healing or that is recovery. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's somewhat the, the strength of the constellation of folks that we're bringing together to have this conversation. There's an explicit attempt to name the trajectory that we're engaging in to arrive at what we're calling healing centers. Yes. It's not neutral. It's not neutral. Um, and and and, no. and again, you know, inviting you to engage in this conversation is purposeful, so we can be uncomfortable and, and, and <laughs> troubled. Um, and you you know, you talked about how the human subject is created and kind of made, and especially by colonization. And part of what you know, in Resma as well, when he talks about white supremacy, that part of the definition of human, at least in the last four or five hundred years, um, is is largely defined. As, as, as whiteness and white maleness, white maleness and property owning being at the pinnacle, yeah. at the pinnacle of, of hierarchy. So, but, you know, I think you have some fascinating uh, notions around transraciality. We don't have to go that deep yet or in the <laughs> conversation. Um, but I'm wondering uh, maybe if you can channel your Yoruba tradition here. Yeah. And like what, what what can you what can you think through in terms of like healing strategies or strategies for recovery and restoration in terms mm. of individual and communal uh, resilience? Yeah, I think that um, our bodies are constrained, largely constrained by humanist imperatives. Mm -hmm. That the invitation to be well, to function, to be productive is largely hum humanist. Mm -hmm. um, and because it's humanist, it's tethered to um, growth imperatives. And because it's tethered to growth imperatives, it's tethered to um, modern imperatives and progress narratives and development. And then the turtles go all the way down. Yeah. You, you see, or, um, so, so I think, you know, we are way, we are always overwhelmed. We're always, I, I like to shift the language and I say, we're always diawhelmed, you know, to, to talk about crisscrossing diagonal influence yeah. in force fields. 
So it's not that it's not a relation of it's not a geometrical relation of up and down overwhelmed. It's that all around us we are, or rather, to put it simply, we live in crossroads. Mm -hmm. We are products of crossroads, mm -hmm. cross hatching influences. But I digress. Um, so the the Yoruba people um, speak about crossroads um, as how bodies come to matter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is the reason why Ishu is the man of the crossroads. Mm -hmm. um, crossroads are where monsters cohere. Mm -hmm. Crossroads, crossroads. In, in a sense, we are monstrous. Mm -hmm. So every definitional gesture is mm -hmm. a move, a risky move in teasing out stability from the volatility of the crossroads. Mm. So this is the reason why Eshu is often needed when healing becomes sickening, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, yeah. so, so, so where I've been going to with writing and, and speaking is trying to see, to say that if healing, for instance, if justice gets in the way of transformation, what do we do? Mm -hmm. If healing becomes a problem, that is, if your wellness, if you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a clean bill of health, mm. right? Mm. What, what, what are the tentacular uh, implications of that? To be well within uh, suburbia in dying ecologies, mm. in a time when in Kabul, for instance, people are now struggling to jump on, a, on the wheel of a plane that is leaving Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Right. What, what does it mean to be well in the midst of suffering? Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so th this is why I speak about the risks and what is occluded when we get well or when we recover. What are the influence? What is the architecture of speaking that way? So the, the Yoruba people offer the crossroads or orita to bring our minds back to the influence and the need for trickster um, gestures, for trickster dimensions yeah um so so the babalawa will cut open the flesh to to make you whole think about the irony of that mm -hmm. to cut you to put you together mm -hmm. right and i think in a sense we need a form of falling apart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. we can our healing justice paradigms could do a lot could situate us because we're living under oppression yeah. we're living under the boots of police brutality we're living in the violence of the nation state that mm -hmm. has been subsidized by pushing it to the edges, right? Mm -hmm. We're living in climatically uproarious times, yeah. tremulous times. It's difficult to live in these times. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in more senses than one, we're transacting bodies with each other, sharing edges with each other. The air is filled with despair, atmospheric despair. It's not just the global warming of carbon, it's the global warming of despair, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the ways that we have learned how to do this is to push it out, is to learn to breathe in, is to learn to pay attention to what our bodies are doing. And that is good. We need that. I need that. You need that. Your son needs that. My yeah. children need that. But it always comes at something lost, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the way the world works diffractively. And I'm saying that we're in such a time when we need to start paying attention to those fugitive things that, are, that slip away when we become well, right? Yeah. We need, we need to lean closer to those trickstery shamanic dimensions that may bring us closer to failure, to illness, to grief and despair, and help us notice that somewhere there are places of power. I call them cracks that might help us find other ways of being in the world. Yeah, no, yeah. And I, I think part of what drew me to this particular conversation with you is because you would force me and many of us who are in this particular turn to articulate what I'm about to say that, you know, the, the, the notion, the, the framing of healing center adds this, this, the center, you know, the healing, the healing centering, you know, restorative processes or processes where we may become well. But I think for me, there is a trickster like fugitive actual move, at least how I enter the conversation mm -hmm. is that the healing center is actually the plotting of the coordinates in a particular yeah. location that enables us to pay attention to the erasure or to the spillage or uh, as you would even say the crack um, right 
Say, right. I'm even open to the point where, I mean, I'm in a sense, I'm theoretically promiscuous. So healing centers, sure, sounds sexy now, but what's next? You know, I'm, I'm kind of more interested in composting. How, how, does, how, does, healing cest, how, how does a healing centered approach is a form of theoretical and practice-based composting that then enables another, a flight, Yes. A yes. line of flight. Yes. So, so just wanted to give yeah. you a little bit of insight in terms of where I'm coming from at that. I, I, I play within the paradigm. I, I see its dysfunction, but I, I'm trying to see what, what else is here. Yes. Um, it, well, I, I think that may, maybe, I think it's very interesting how you think in terms of coordinates, right? Constellations, right? And I think we need those, spillages need boundaries to be spillages, mm -hmm. obviously, <laughs> right? So, so, so that's, that's already, I think we can understand that. We can agree on that. Um, my, my problem is, again, the language of risk is what I want to center here, is, is mm -hmm. that the, is the, the familiar has a way of re, repurposing itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? And, and yeah. so it's, it's, this, it's this circle of convergence, right? Mm -hmm. That healing comes at certain costs. Yeah. And the costs may be, what is at stake may be transformation. Mm. And because there's something conservative about healing. Mm. It, that's why the language of restoration mm -hmm. coming back to ourselves it's it's about that right and i'm worried about that in some yeah. sense i do not deny that that because i need it again but this is yeah. highly nuanced right yeah, yeah. i feel that the bodies that were given to us as props for the white body mm -hmm. or for white or for how whiteness wanted to make the and is making the world and it's worlding the world mm. that's a slave suit Mm -hmm. we the human is a slave suit mm -hmm. especially for minoritarian bodies it's like wear this this is the cloth you wear mm -hmm. and when you wear this we can look at you and know that we are superior we we can know that we are doing the right thing this is i i do not even moralize colonization yeah. like it's bad or something i'm yeah. noticing of course within certain spaces um uh, i moved to moralize it but um and i'm not justifying it either but i'm just trying to say that um the bodies that were given to us stilts you know props for this white modernity um i don't want to i don't want to indefinitely make it well right Do you you know what i'm saying i don't want to publish yeah. it all the time well, yeah, right yeah. when the world gifts me a a crack in that slave suit I can stitch it up again. I can stitch my uniform and put it back together again. And that'll be fine. But, but maybe issue sometimes says, don't stitch it up yet. Maybe tear it apart a little more mm -hmm. and see that there are other ways to stitch your dress. Just like that woman on the slave ship tore her dress mm -hmm. and stitched a rag doll from it. Maybe there are other ways we can put our bodies together. Mm -hmm. That is a refusal of the plantation's imperative to be well to show up, black excellence, be good, you know, yeah, rise to the yeah. top, <laughs> you know. No, oh, yeah. You know, this is this is the reason, brother. Why I say blackness is a search for new disabilities, mm. right? Mm. <laughs> right. Mm. Mm. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, um, yeah. So just like that, that that idea of uh, you know a shoe, or as as a metaphor, thinking about let's say a wound or or an experience. Yeah. That yeah. it's just about healing completely from that particular wound, but rather like what 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 is, what's enabled of keeping that wound open? What kind of future yeah. possibilities uh, can come from that? Um, and I think part of at least from my vantage point in terms of this work around healing centered is is developing at least the the beginning of some resilience in order to sit in the heat of of the wounds. Uh, whether they be historical, whether they be intergenerational, yeah. whether they be yeah. and then and then engaging in community, obviously, and then in discussion that allows us to go somewhere else. Uh, uh, at least yeah. that that's kind of what what I'm kind of thinking about. Um, you know, there's I'll just say that there's this a lot of as you said like there's a lot of the zeitgeist around thinking about trauma. There's all this notion around post post traumatic growth. Post traumatic growth, yes. Right. And 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 you know, I growth obviously falls within the particular paradigm of what that means. And 
what it is. Yeah. Um, so there is this notion of post-traumatic learning now as well, which yeah. I kind of yeah. like a little more. Um, and I think maybe that coming back to Eshu and, and, and leaving the wound a little open is like, what does it mean to engage in post-traumatic learning in, in a more mm. rich way? Mm. Um, I think the term post-traumatic growth is mm. one way the academic world is coming to learn something that is scandalous that I sometimes want to utter with poetic, yeah. <laughs> poetic license. And yeah. that is that I don't think we can get rid of trauma, mm. right? It, let me put it like, like the, I don't think there's any human, humanist or human-based protocol or set of rituals that can banish trauma. I think trauma is more than human. You know, there, there, we, we need to see trauma as something that is tethered to human experience mm. or tef or some time or somehow tracking onto emotional neurological pathways in the brain mm. or in the body or in the vagus nerve, something that is organized, that is based on organs and your functions yeah. and the psy and psychic well-being. We need to tether it to the human to make sense of it because the only way trauma makes sense to us, again, within the ethical configurations I've been speaking about is if it helps us uh, situate ourselves, whether as victims, mm. sometimes, you know, as, you know, striving to be citizens, right? There, there's another mimetic, you know, consolation here. It's, it's the victim. It, this is the reason why Black bodies, historically, especially in white oppressive systems, have strived to see, have strived to enter into the space of the victim, mm. right? So that you can see me because there's a fast track um, to citizenship, mm -hmm. if I can only get on that escalator yeah. that, that starts from victimhood. But of course, the nation state knows how to dismiss Black victimhood. Mm. You know, it knows, how to, it knows how to dismiss it out of hand. It knows how to say, nah, 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 we're not going to grant you victimhood. Well, well, again, I digress, <laughs> brother, but <laughs> um, I digress all the time. Um, the, the, the point I was trying to make is that if... If we frame healing exclusively as this um, as this tiny linear road to recovery, we might lose sight of uh, the other communal uh, animist possibilities around us that are inviting us to do something else with the world. Because I I don't see the human as an atomic presence in the world. I see it as a processual. Um, relational being or becoming in the world. But your question again, brother, remind me of the, the, the thing you said before this, I've lost my way. Well, you know, we both got, I got too excited. We both got lost in this moment. <laughs> I, I think if anything, you know, I, I've, you know, we've been sitting, I've been sitting with your work for so long in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the different concepts you use, but I think this moment here, we are embodying that that call of yours you know yeah yeah get lost we this is what it means to get lost and then you know in the dark try to find our way I, I think i'll find my way back to you in a moment by saying that just to clarify further because you know when you're in whether it's academic or part of any field and you're claiming you know like you're claiming it would be interesting to see you hear you defend post-activism if you would you would i don't think uh -huh, you defend uh -huh. post activism you do something else but in this case, I'm upholding or touching on healing centered. And I just want to yes, yes, yeah. say that to be clear, I don't think that this particular term, at least those folks who we're engaging with are engaging in a kind of savior like, savior like uh, practice of trying to, on the one hand, restore, go back to some original point or even save the earth. Um, uh, or save ourselves or save our souls and especially not engaging in kind of classic judeo-christian approaches of salvation so, yeah. so i think what, what's what's happening for me as i'm getting lost with you and you're you're forcing me and, and us to really think a little more deeply about what it means to be healing mm -hmm. is that to be clear that this is actually an epistemology or, or a methodology to get even more lost and be yeah. comfortable in moving and engaging in the dark yeah. that's that's yeah. the invitation 
yeah yeah and i i wouldn't say that all healing healing or restorative in spite of the name the name is heavy the terms are heavy yeah and um struck through or threaded through it um a sensed conservatism um mm-hmm. a conservative you know um thing here but i i do not wish to be understood as saying that there is a homogenic or monolithic yeah. thing going on here right yeah. i'm sure i'm sure there are rivalets you know every every rope is made of strands right so i'm sure that there are different strands and there are different approaches and there are different understandings of what is happening um i i i feel called to to notice you know to to notice the um, the complexity, the monstrosity, the chimeric nature of the body, mm. right? And 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 to say that the body is doing other things. That I was going to make a point in the as I, in my last spiel, and I'm st- I'm still grieving the loss of my darling, <laughs> right? I was going to make a beautiful point, and it just got lost. Maybe if we we went back in time, we might find that what what was want, wanting to be expressed. But um, I, I just feel that the we, we don't want to, we want to pay attention to what the body is doing, mm-hmm. but in paying attention, notice that attention itself is embodying it in its effect. There, there's no phenomenological distance when we pay attention to the body, right? We're not looking at something pure. Attention is also ideological and political, Yeah. right? There, there, these are practices of coherence, right? To, to pass files between departments in a hospital is a way of co-creating and manufacturing disease. It's not like hospitals and medicine happened upon this disease, right? Mm-hmm. Happened upon, uh, uh, you know, cancer or stuff. These practices mean that it's always being made. The world yeah. is constantly processual. So yeah. that's what I want to pay attention to. Yeah. How are we manufacturing ourselves and what are we doing it in league with? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Also, to close out, let me just share just one very brief framing that begins to kind of uh, touch on some of the ways that particular scholars are talking about healing center education, especially Dr. Sean Jinwright, who's a professor in urban education. And, you know, okay. he, he coined the term him. healing centered engagement, which is okay. one of the first times where in academic literature there is a, a, a serious attempt to take to integrate healing in terms of uh, an education, uh, policy and practice, which is interesting. And he, he kind of talks about, uh, uh, you know, that we think about healing from a pathological perspective. What's wrong with people? What's, what, what, are, the, what are the diseases? What are the social uh, conflicts that true. generate? True. And then he, he suggests kind of a, taking a salutogenic a salutogenic approach where, you know, the right. focus is a solution and, you know, not the symptoms. But even there, I think, and he's actually going to be part of this experience too. So Beautiful. I'll, it'll be exciting to see, have, uh, see us having this conversation. But that also reinforces a binary. And I think yeah. you're inviting us into a third space. Mm-hmm. You're inviting us into a third space. And I just appreciate uh, the, the, the pushing that, What's, what's happening outside of us naming or engaging in healing center? What are the other phenomena that, that may be happening in the context of trying to engage in this, this project? Um, right, right, right. Uh, brother, I, let, me, let me ask a question. When I say the, the terms black excellence, what comes to mind immediately? What was the first thing that came to mind when I said black excellence? I thought about Oprah. And like, I said it. <laughs> yes. Oprah was right there in my mind. I lie not. It's just right there. Oprah. It's it's it was Oprah. Black excellence, Oprah. It's it's uh well I, <laughs> let's not go into that rabbit hole. But the, the thing is, you know, to juxtapose the the urging towards showing up, yeah, you know, striving, mm. you know, um appearing and showing that we've got our own as well yeah. um it, we, we don't call it black excellence in africa right we just call it development <laughs> because we, we want to eat you see so black excellence is the diasporic version we call it development oh look we have skyscrapers 
there, there's almost a, a somatic corollary as well. Mm. Like, like the, the, the idea of rising up, of, of measuring up, of, of, you know, putting our shoulders next to the Davidian image that has been provided to us as the image of excellence. Yeah. That, that is where we should strive. And I'm not saying that these paradigms are, are trying yeah. to do that. Yeah. But I'm saying that beyond our best intentions, there are pre-intentional forces that are shaping bodies in particular ways, giving mm. us language that might appear compassionate, yeah. that is also re-entrenching the paradigm. And capitalism, for one, has deep and ingenious ways of re-entrenching itself. I remember what I wanted to say. I'll just wrap it up um, quickly, in part, that trauma cannot be cured mm. or... Uh, you know, taken away. It's it's always eased out into a different, into the extensions of our bodies, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think of trauma as atmospheric. And I think it's not bodies that have trauma, it's that trauma enlists bodies mm-hmm. in how it comes to matter, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it, it's that these are more than human forces. And they are both creative and destructive, which is the reason why my elders say, issue not only created creolized futures in the diasporic world, he instigated modernity, mm. right? The trauma of the middle passage came from the same crossroads. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, so any humanist attempt to get rid of it, I'm usually suspicious of. Yeah. And so I want to ask questions about that process and say, what else is happening here? Exactly. Exactly. And uh, just thank you so much, brother. This is exactly what I needed and what I think the community <laughs> needs is to is to hear a troubling of this notion of healing because we see that in the across the next few years, I think thinking about trauma and all kinds of theories around trauma will, will become popular. And I, I think we should hold a level of skepticism um, and, then, and then hold a little bit of uh, a promise if possible, but all in, in yeah. the purpose of fugitivity and, and, and what you call composting. So just thank you so much for, for this conversation, brother. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, man.